Good morning. Welcome, everyone. And thanks to all of you for being here, students, teachers, principals, parents, and all of our devoted Teach NYS leadership. Today, today is more than a fun-filled field trip to Albany. Today is all about how we change the way the state government thinks about education and thinks about our schools. And it starts by bringing 500 students to Albany to talk to our elected officials and to explain to them that your education matters, that education is a civil right, that your right to choose how and where to be educated without financial hardship and without financial penalty is a civil right that every parent and every student in this state should enjoy. It means that every single student in this state deserves a quality education, regardless of their race or their gender, regardless of their religious persuasion, or the type of school that they attend, that every student deserves the best possible education so that they can become informed citizens and productive contributors to the economic health of our state. But we're not quite there yet. We've started, but we're not quite there yet. Consider the following. There are 412,000 students in New York State who don't attend public schools. That's about 16% of the total New York State school population. But that 16% of New York State students receive about 1% of the dollars that New York State spends each year on education. 16% of the students, 1% of the dollars. How can anyone believe that such a system is even remotely fair? Think about this. New York now spends about $20,000 each year to educate a student in the public school system. So do the math. 412,000 students in the state go, don't go to public school. The state doesn't pay a nickel to educate them. So we're saving the state over $8 billion a year in money that they do not need to spend and instead, we shift that burden to the parents of those students. Can anyone argue that this is remotely fair? Shouldn't some of these savings, not all of them, not even 50% of them, but some reasonable proportion of those savings, shouldn't those come back to our communities and to our schools? These are serious questions. And so we come together today from Flatbush, and from Ramaz, from SKA and from Solomon Schechter, from Halb and SAR and North Shore, from Mag and David and from Hank and Hafter and a dozen other schools, a dozen other yeshivot and day schools, we come together today to ask our government officials these very tough questions and to ask them to do what is right and what is fair. And we have a very, very special guest this morning who's waiting backstage, who has been fighting together with us to move the needle of fairness on state aid to non-public education, Governor Andrew Cuomo. I want to tell all of you, and I'm proud to be able to say this publicly and loudly and without reservation, there is no governor in the history of our state who has done more to fight for our community than Governor Cuomo.
Last year, last year when our community was reeling under the impact of BDS initiatives, when companies and institutions were threatening to boycott and sanction Israel, the governor signed an executive order aimed at this BDS activity. And with a stroke of a pen, he made a simple, clear, and courageous statement. If you boycott Israel, we will not do business with you. And let me tell you what happened. Because if you want to understand what one courageous person can do, how one courageous person can change the entire face of our nation and what goes on across our country, after the governor signed that executive order, 40 other states followed the governor's lead and outlawed BDS activity. Just last week, last week, in the face of accelerating acts of anti-Semitism across the country, bomb threats at Jewish community centers, Jewish schools, swastikas painted on the walls of our subways and in the playgrounds of our schools. Last week, the governor called together leaders of all of the religious faiths in our state. And he said to them something equally simple, equally clear, and equally courageous. Anti-Semitism will not be tolerated in New York State. Because in New York, if one person is attacked, every one of us is attacked. And when the governor says something, it's not just words. He publicly announced that day last week that he was proposing to the New York State Legislature an allocation, an additional allocation of $25 million for security services to keep our schools safe. And on the fight for fundamental fairness and state aid for private and parochial school education, the fight that brings us all together today, the governor has always been with us. He understands that a state education system where 16% of the students are in private schools and yet receive 1% of government funding is just wrong. He understands that. It's unfair. It is unacceptable. It is not sustainable. And state government needs to do better. And our governor understands that. And so in the last three years, state aid to non-public schools has increased from $141 million to $345 million under the government's, governor's watch. So the needle is moving, but it needs to move a whole lot more and a whole lot faster. And that's why we're here today. Our schools can't wait, our parents can't wait, and we are here to av advocate for fairness. We're here to ask the state to reimburse all schools, public and private, for the cost of math and science instruction. It's perfectly legal, and it's a win for everyone. It's a win for the schools, it's a win for our students, and it's a win for a state that will have a much stronger economy by having our students prepared in math and science and tech savvy to hold the jobs of the future. So, Governor, I want to conclude, I want to conclude by thanking you, but I want to thank you twice. First, for everything that you have done for our community, for fighting for us and for standing with us. But we also want to thank you for your commitment to move the fairness needle further and to move it more dramatically and ever faster. 
Ladies and gentlemen, students from across our state, I have the great pleasure of introducing to you the governor of the state of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, welcome to Albany. I hope you had a good trip. You're way up north now, right? You're expecting snow. You're expecting big mountains upstate in upstate New York. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. Let me begin by applauding and thanking uh, Alan Fagan, who is a magnificent leader. You are blessed to have him. He's a magnificent leader for your organization and for your schools. He's a magnificent mentor for uh, students uh, as, as a teacher himself and as a role model himself. Uh, and more than anything, he is an effective, effective advocate and partner with the state of New York. So let's give him another big round of applause. I agree with Mr. Fagan's message. He is exactly right. Uh, education, education, education. That's what it's all about. That's what made New York, New York. That's what made America, America. It said you can come here and we promise you one thing, one promise. We'll give you the ability to rise as high as your talents will take you. And we'll give you a world-class education. And we have basically two education systems in the state of New York. One is a public education system, public schools, which are very, very important and we support. And then we have religious schools. I'm Catholic. My parents chose to send me to a Catholic uh, elementary school and a Catholic high school I went to. I'm from Queens, and uh, I went to a Catholic elementary, Catholic high school. The religious education was important to my parents the way it's important to your parents. Uh, and the religious schools, Jewish schools, Catholic schools, Muslim schools, are a very, very important part of our educational system. First, because people have choice. Your parents had a choice. They could send you to a religious school. They could send you to a public school. My parents had a choice. And that choice is important to us. And we respect that choice. And we want to make sure everybody has that choice. So the sustainability of the religious schools is very important. Second, if you didn't have the religious schools, if you didn't have uh, the, the Orthodox Union educating 200,000 students, they would go to the public schools. And if they went to the public schools, frankly, our current public education system couldn't handle it. So if you want to preserve the public education system, you have to make sure that the religious education system stands strong. So. The wisdom then says it's not about supporting a religious education system or a public education system. You must support both to have either. And that's our point. You have to be supportive of a public education system and a religious education system. Uh, it's not a question of either or, it's both. Uh, we have done dramatically better over recent years. And Mr. Fagan is right. We uh, have to move the needle further and we have to move it faster. Uh, we propose a budget for the state. That's what happens in the beginning of the year. And the governor makes his proposal. And then the legislature, the assembly and the Senate, they take up the governor's budget and we argue about it. Nicely, but it's an argument. And everybody has their own opinion. My opinion is that I aggressively support the religious schools. My budget reflects that. I've given the religious schools in my budget more money than ever before in history. We did that last year, and we'll do it again this year. 
where we propose even more funding than ever before for the religious schools. We increase what we call uh, the funds for mandated services. And then we provide $25 million for capital money to make sure we have technology in schools. You're doing extraordinarily well uh, teaching students the skills for the next generation, the STEM skills. That is about technology, but then you have to have the technology in the classroom and they have to have the, literally, the ability to mechanically connect uh, the hardwiring capacity. So we have $25 million additional this year for that capital improvements to schools. And as Mr. Fagan said, I announced a proposal for an additional $25 million for security for religious schools, given all that's going on. And I want to take a moment and speak to you about that. There is a rash of anti-Semitic activity that's going on, not just in New York, uh, but all across the nation. Uh, also in Canada, over 100 incidents across the country. And it is very, very disturbing. I'm sure it's disturbing to you personally. It's disturbing to me personally. We felt it here in New York from one end of the state to the other, from Buffalo, we've had it on Long Island, Rochester, Syracuse, New Rochelle, Tarrytown, Staten Island, all across the state. And it's getting, if anything, worse, not better. Now, it is not new. You are relatively young people, so to you, these things seem new. I wish it was new. Bigotry, hatred of others is not new. It is very, very old. The old equation still exists. Anger plus ignorance equals ugliness. Anger plus ignorance equals ugliness. And that's what you're seeing now. People are angry. Angry at the economy, angry at their job situation, angry at the threats that they're feeling from other countries. They're angry. And they're ignorant. And you put those two things together and you get the lashing out and the bigotry and the meanness and the cowardice that you see in these threats. That's the ugliness. It is repugnant to everything we believe as New Yorkers. Everything we believe. You're Jewish, I'm Catholic. My forebears were Italian. New York made one statement to the whole world. New York said, we will open our arms to you and we will invite you in. And people from all over the world came to New York, came to America. We are all from someplace else. By definition, unless you are Native American, you're a newcomer. Everybody. Anybody here Native American? No. Then you're all newcomers. You're all immigrants to the land. And no one has a right to say who should be here or who should not be here. That's the New York way. We're all here. And the promise we make to each other is we're all equal and we're all free from discrimination and we're all free from stereotype and we work together to provide opportunity for all of us. That's what New York is. So these threats are disgusting, they're sad, they're repugnant, they're cowards. I went this morning to the Jewish Community Center here in Albany. Children, pre-K, daycare, you would threaten a place that has children? What could be more reprehensible than that type of behavior and that type of activity? Now, it's not just disgusting, it's also illegal. 
And as governor of the state, I want you to know I am doing everything I can to enforce the law, to find these people, to bring them to justice, and to give them their due. We have... We have the state police and a special unit set up by the state police, and they're working with the FBI, and they're working with local uh, law enforcement entities because we want to be loud and clear and strong that we have zero tolerance for this type of behavior whatsoever. The Jewish community is very important to New York. New York would be a different New York if it did not have the Jewish community. Largest population of Jewish people outside of Israel is where? New York. New York. That's what, one of the things that makes us special. You look at our tradition, you look at the tradition of this nation. So many of our great leaders, so many of the people who contributed to shaping America were Jewish. Benjamin Cardozo, one of the greatest jurists ever. A great jurist who's now on the Supreme Court, Elena Kagan, who I had the opportunity to work with. A great governor of New York, Governor Herbert Lehman. Great Attorney General Lefkowitz, great Senator Jacob Javits before your time. Beautiful, beautiful man. Going back to when the nation was just formed, the poem on the Statue of Liberty, written by Emma Lazarus, a Jewish woman. Business community, arts community, so much of New York and America we owe to the Jewish people. And that unity, that unity is important. And it is important that we speak to it. The Jewish community is important to me personally, not just because of the way I grew up. I have three sisters. Two of my sisters married Jewish men. They are literally my family and they are part of the family of New York. With this ugliness that is going on, it's our obligation to stand up and to speak loudly against it. Ellie Wiesel, as usual, said it best. Wherever men and women are being persecuted because of their race, religion, or political views, that place must, at that moment, become the center of the universe. These acts of anti-Semitism must be attacked by all of us. This weekend, I'm going to do an economic development trip to Israel, which is a great economic development partner of ours, to talk about technology and joint ventures that we're working on with new technologies and to talk about security. But I'm also going to bring a message of solidarity. And I want to say to the people of Israel, and I want to say to the Jewish community in New York, you are not alone. And every person in the state of New York with any decency and understanding of what it means to be a New Yorker stands with you at this moment, and we speak with one voice condemning this repugnant behavior and we stand arm in arm with the Jewish community through this time of hardship. I say that to you today. I say that to the, we'll say that to the people in Israel this weekend. In the meantime, I welcome you to Albany. I would be personally offended if you do not go and view the Capitol while you are here. The state Capitol was all redone. It's a short walk from where you are right now. It is a beautiful piece of history. It's a great building. One of the most beautiful capitals in the United States, I might say, as an arrogant New York governor. Uh, finished by Teddy Roosevelt, who was one of the great governors. Uh, and it is now all re redone, and it really is a special place. Uh, a lot of history, a lot of great governors, Teddy Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Al Smith, a gentleman named Mario Cuomo, who was before your time, but you, you missed the great one when you missed him. 
So you see the Capitol, you have a safe trip, you have a good day, you stand up for religious education. When those leaders come here today, you stand up and you scream for support of your schools. And I will be in Israel, and you carry the message home, and I'll carry the message to Israel. Thank you, and God bless you.